so Manchester City have missed their first opportunity to be named Premier League champions. They failed to beat rivals Manchester United at the Etihad, meaning their wait to be crowned Premier League champions will have to go on, but it's still a foregone conclusion that Guardiola's men will win the title this season. City have seen incredible success since they were taken over in 2008 by Sheikh Mansour and this will be their third Premier League title since then. But 16 years ago, they weren't actually even in the top flight. In 2002, they would win the old first division under Kevin Keegan and win promotion at the top flight where they have been ever since. Their final game of that season was a 3-1 victory over Portsmouth, so let's take a look at who started for City on that day in 2002 and where they are now. In goal was Carlo Nash. Edison has been incredible this season for City, but is he better than Carlo Nash? Yes, but anyway, Nash was City's stopper against Pompey, having shared the gloves throughout the season with Nicky Weaver. This was probably Nash's biggest achievement, also winning the playoffs with Crystal Palace, and he was so close to winning the FA Cup, picking up a runners-up medal at Stoke in 2011, who were actually beaten by Manchester City, in what was the first trophy of the Sheikh Mansour era. Nash would retire in 2014, and he is currently the goalkeeping coach at League One side Oldham Athletic. In defence was Steve Howey. A scorer on the day against Portsmouth, the North East lad was a part of Kevin Keegan's entertainers at Newcastle and linked up with KK once again at Eastlands as part of his first division winning defence. This was Howie's second first division title win of his career, also picking up a medal in 1993 with Newcastle. Following his three years with City, Howie would go on to play for Leicester, Bolton, New England Revolution and Hartlepool United, retiring in 2005. Nowadays, Howie works in the media and does a lot of work for the Premier League. Next up we've got Richard Dunn. The Irish centre half was just a young 22 year old back in 2002 with a career full of own goals and red cards ahead of him. Dunn was there when City won the first division title and he would still be there 6 years later when they became the oil rich club they are today, making more than 300 appearances for City. Dunn would leave in 2009 for Aston Villa as the big money star started to arrive at the Etihad and Julian Lescott. Dunn's final club would be QPR where he was unable to stop the Arsenal slipping into the championship and he now appears to do work for Irish television as a pundit. Next it's Stuart Pearce. This was Psycho's final ever game as a player, if you ignore that time he played in non-league in 2016, joining Manchester City for a year in 2001 where he would end his career. Pearce would captain the side to the title but was unable to score a penalty in the final game of the season. Now where have you heard that before? But after retirement, Pierce immediately turned to coaching, eventually replacing Keegan in the City dugout before getting the sack in 2007. Pierce's longest tenure would come as the England under-21s boss and he would also manage the Great Britain Olympic side in 2012 and then have another crack at the Nottingham Forest job, which was a pretty miserable affair to be honest. Nowadays, Pierce is part of David Moyes' coaching setup at West Ham. Next up it's Danny Tiato. The names in this team must make City kiss the ground shape Mansour walks on. Teatro was a City player between 1998 and 2004, making over 100 appearances for the club, then going on to play for Leicester for three years. In 2007, Teatro would return to his native Australia, where he would spend the remaining six years of his career, with his final club being Point Crook in 2013. Now according to Twitter, Teatro was the host for Insiders Football Tours in Australia, but that was back in 2015 when he last tweeted, so who knows if it's still true. Either way, he's probably a dirty cheat like all the Aussies. Up next, it's Nicholas Jensen. Gonna be honest lads, not sure what formation was played on this day, so you're just getting the starting 11. Anyway, Denmark's Jensen joined City just a few months before they won the first division title, arriving in January 2002 for £500,000 from FC Copenhagen, a far cry from the fees they're paying nowadays for fullbacks. Jensen would spend a season and a half in Manchester before joining Borussia Dortmund in 2003 for 750 grand. He would then return to England with Fulham and then head back to Denmark in 2007 for two more seasons with Copenhagen. Nowadays, Jensen is a football agent back in Denmark, so maybe he could use his native connections to get the greatest date of the Etihad. No, not Christian Eriksen, Nicholas Bentner. Next up it's Kevin Horlock. 16 years ago, Kevin Horlock was playing in midfield for Manchester City in the second tier of English football. In 2018, Manchester City now have David Silva and Kevin De Bruyne in midfield and are in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. While Kevin Horlock is managing non-league side Maldon and Tiptree. On top of that, he's assistant coach for the Colchester United under-23 side and an assistant for the Northern Ireland under-21s. Pep, you know what to do, 
get shot with Mikel Arteta and hand Kevin Horlock job number four. Next we've got Ali Benabia. An Algerian international, Benabia arrived at Man City on a free in 2001 after being released by PSG. The midfielder was very impressive in the first division, being named as the club's player of the year before taking on the captain's armband when they returned to the Premier League, where sadly, Benabria struggled. After one season in the top flight, Benabria decided to retire, before going back on his word five days later and joining Al Rayyan in Qatar. A second retirement occurred in 2006 after playing for Qatar SC, and Benabria is now a pundit, so I guess you could call him the Algerian Jamie Redknapp. Not sure how, just works. Next in midfield was Sean Wright Phillips. At 36 years old, Sean Wright Phillips still looks like a child, so just imagine the grief he had getting served back in 2002 when he was only 20 and trying to celebrate winning a second tier title. Little Sean's career probably didn't go the way it should have, and things took a turn for the worse when he first left City to join Chelsea in a big money move in 2005. Three years later and Wright Phillips would be back at Eastlands, re-signing just days before Sheikh Mansour purchased the club. In 2011, Wright Phillips would join QBR and then followed his flourishing brother in New York Red Bulls in 2015. Sadly, Sean didn't do quite as well as Bradley did and his last club would be Phoenix Rising who play in the second tier of American football, not the NFL. However, it appears that Wright Phillips is no longer part of their roster. Next we've got Darren Huckabee. He would score 20 league goals as City won the title, and this was a tally that Huckabee would never beat in his career, with his next best being 14 for Coventry and then Norwich. He would join the Canaries in 2003, firstly on loan, and would win another promotion there, helping Norwich reach the Premier League in 2004. Despite Delia Smith's rallying cry, the Yellows were relegated the following season, and Huckabee remained with them until 2008, before joining San Jose Earthquakes where he ended his career in 2009. Huckabee was last seen as part of Norwich's coaching staff, but he's since left his post and is now just really active on Twitter. He seems to bloody love it. He's never off the thing. Please follow me, Darren. And finally, we've got Sean Gota. Feed the goat and he will score. And Sean Gota did exactly that on the final day against Portsmouth, scoring goal number 28 of the season in the league. A Manchester City legend, Gorda would leave the club in 2003 for Reading and then went on to play for Coventry, Southend, Bermuda Hogs, think I've said that right, and North Village Rams before retiring in 2010. Last year, Gorda entered the world of management, taking charge of non-league side Ilkeston FC, but months later they would suffer liquidation and have to reform. Gorda now appears to do some work in the media, but remains a Manchester City fan through and through. So that's Man City's starting 11 from their 2002 First Division title win. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.